Good evening. You can't judge a community based on the actions of one individual. That's the sentiment of a charity worker who fears the actions of the man responsible for the Westminster attack has severely damaged the image of Birmingham and its community relations. The world's media descended on the city following the killings last Wednesday, committed by Khalid Massoud, who had lived in the city. Our special correspondent, Peter Wilson, has been to meet two men who in recent months have done so much to change perceptions about Birmingham and its Muslims' communities. Wasim Iqbal and his friend Navid Ahmed walking through Spark Hill in Birmingham. They've recently become TV and internet sensations. Two ordinary Brummies talking about being proud to be British and Muslim. Last week's attack in London and the link with Khalid Massoud to the West Midlands has focused not just Britain's but the world's attention once again on Birmingham. For me, it's not about a Muslim or a non-Muslim thing. It's 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 about a Birmingham thing. It's about it's about us, and it's about us as a community now. Do you know what? We need to deal with this, and um, I'm very eager to show the world that no, don't judge us on him. Judge us on like the positive things that we're doing. Do you know like what I mean? Said before, we're out here. Like I've talk. said before, you can't judge a whole community based on the actions of one individual. It's just it's just unfair. Were you surprised that this man came from Birmingham or was living in Birmingham, Carl Anderson? Yeah, like I said, I'd never heard of him. Even now, I've been asking around. I don't know anybody that's ever heard of him or known him. So it doesn't seem like he was a very, you know, social person or part of the community or maybe even had many friends. Masood's wife, Rohe Hadara, now living in London, has condemned his murderous outrage. But for many Muslims, there's a sense of anger that they're all expected to apologize for this man's criminal actions. Everybody wants to hear what Muslims have got to think about it. And for me, that's all just depressing. And then the people that want to know whether Muslims condemn it, that's just insulting. We are always expected to condemn it. Where I think people should be smart enough to understand that whether we verbally make some sort of statement or we don't, we, from our hearts, everybody's going to condemn it. We're human at the end of the day. Before we're even Muslim, we're human. The message linking terrorism to Birmingham hasn't just been on the national agenda, but also the international one. To try and improve relationships as well with our community and other communities, but also Muslims and non-Muslims and people of different faiths. And you go up and down the country, you do all of these things, and then one thing like this happens and it ruins everything. Something like this just brings you back to square one. Both men work for a charity and next week risk their lives going to Iraq to help refugees near Mosul. And Peter Wilson joins us now. Peter, there's still very little information coming to light about Massoud's time in Birmingham. Very little information about what he was doing in Birmingham in Birmingham. The Metropolitan Police say tonight they continue to question two men arrested in Birmingham on suspicion of preparing terrorist acts. They've also revealed that they've searched a total of nine addresses in Birmingham and are continuing to search at one of those addresses where Massoud either lived or visited. At the same time it's important to say that Massoud lived in as many places as he had aliases. There was uh, Tunbridge Wells, Luton, London, Crawley in East Sussex, Saudi Arabia as well as Birmingham. And tonight his wife, Rohe Hadara, who lived with him in, in Birmingham until the end of uh, this year, she's expressed her condolences to the four people who died and she's asked for privacy both for herself, her family and her children. Peter Wilson, thank you for that. A surgeon has been...